was born and raised in Norwalk, Connecticut. I come from an Italian family, uh, second generation Italians. Um, my father was Tuscany, my mother was Scalabres. And the my childhood was um, was filled with uh, a lot of um, festive uh, 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 holidays and uh, a, a, a large ex extended family, grandparents and cousins, and um, one of the pe people had. Um, Marvelous! I had uh, like two or three Navajo rugs, and I remember just I was just fascinated with them. They were so beautiful. And then when I got to California, I wanted to buy one, and they were so expensive. I decided that I think well, I'll I'll, I'll leave one myself. So there was there, there was a community college in. White Rock, and uh, they taught the Navajo. So I wrote to them, and then I got this uh, printout that they were having a a workshop. Send a hundred dollars, and uh, you can go to the workshop. So I sent a hundred dollars, and then we were given a map how to get there and the time. Now, you just would have to be in Navajo land to understand, be given a map where there are no street signs. And there's, <laughs> and it was like in, you know, <laughs> middle, middle of the desert. In the beginning, Mabel took us, you know, we, we gathered up the, uh, the, the, all the things that we needed to make the dyes. One interesting experience, and she says, okay, and she said, um, I pick up the lichen, uh, the lichen that was growing, uh, you know, across the sea. And we couldn't see it. So Mabel bent down, picked one up, and then you saw that they were all around. But you couldn't see it until she showed us what it was that she was talking about. And these, all these uh, colors were dyed. We... Um, this the, the the gray is a, a natural wool from the sheep. They have gray sheep, and they have uh, black sheep, and and they have white sheep. Uh, but the uh, different color um, uh, oranges and 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 ochres. They're from uh, plants. One was the the ju juniper. Um, roots of a juniper tree that we, we dug up. Another was a, a, uh, a liking. I think the very, very orange was a as a ground liking that was uh, on, the, on, the, on the sandy terrain. There, the Navajo way is that whatever color comes, you, you, you say thank you. Religion is tied up with weaving. The whole thing about the Spider Woman and the having the twins, and uh, and the, the whole thing, and it's very very important in Navajo weaving that once you get to the middle, you do the mirror image. And she showed me how to do the mirror image. We stopped by, uh, and I learned the uh, two sided weaving with her. I had a very, very meaningful experience there. At, at uh, one point in our marriage, Yaakov, um, Yaakov became very disillusioned with California life. And he said that he would like to uh, move to Israel. And he'd never been to Israel. And... Uh, and then I saw how serious he was studying the Chumash. And I said, what does it say about weavers? And he said, oh, the weaver can weave on on both sides, a different picture, you know, the parochet, and the master weaver does this. And then I said, oh, my teacher, Mabel, from 
the Navajos knows how to weave on both sides. So that when um, when Rav Ariel asked me to to weave the uh, Big Day Kahuna, I said, "Well, I don't weave clothing, but when you want to do the parochet, I'll I'll I would like to do that." He says, "Kaveret Avraham Sliat Liat." Slow, slowly, which I'd, I didn't know what he meant, but I decided to embark on doing the Big Day Kahuna. So uh, that meant uh, joining complex weavers and uh, learning about complex weaves, learning how this, this loom, this Dobie uh, loom, uh, very com- complex, and then, then I learned that, and I found out I a lot of m- m- Mechanical ability and uh, and uh, and the I guess the mathematical thing I, I was able to learn about uh, textile structure and things and I was able to, able to do this um, big day kahuna. I do I do want to do a sample of the um, the parochet with the lion on one side and the eagle on the other side and do it because. People are just interested in seeing it, and it's, it's really no. None of this is a secret. None of this is a secret. There was this whole mystery when I first started doing about around that to the big day kahun and the parochet, and, and like nobody, nobody did it. But I don't know why, because it's really you have enough information. You're given enough the halacha and. And you know, and and everybody. It seems that that the people who who know how to do these things aren't interested because there's no money involved, and the people who want to do them they don't know how to weave and they don't know how. And there was a there was a little bit of a question like, oh, can you do this? I mean, are you allowed? You're allowed to do this because there was also this, this little, uh, kind of like unspoken thing around that. My my life kind of at this point ends there because I haven't finished it. I haven't really perfected it because it takes so long to do, you know, and uh, maybe maybe I haven't sampled enough or anything, but I still haven't done. All it is that I'm capable capable of doing, and there's lots of reasons. Everybody has reasons why they do not do what they're capable of doing, and this is this is this is life trying to figure out how you can do what it is that you're totally capable of doing. The low I do the big day kimono. Big Day Kahuna is done in, uh, in, in, in double, meaning it's all in one piece. There's no sewing together. It's a third set that I've done. So the, um, the, uh, the problem is that at the point at which the legs meet the bodice is a very, very tight, if it's done in, um, in two pieces, it's a very tight area, and it doesn't work. You need a third dimension to give it a fullness. So that's why the legs are at an angle like this. They're woven like this. So when the, they're put on, the legs straighten out, and they puff up in, in the front and the back. So how is it done in two pieces? I have 16 harnesses here. And the first eight are for the top cloth. And from 9 to 16 is the bottom cloth. These here are rags 
You see, this tab, there's nothing on the A, the first A. Well, and so that means they all go up. If they're not tabbed, the harness goes up. So what happens is here, I said I have 16 harnesses, eight for, for, eight for the top and eight for the uh, bottom cloth. Okay, now I'm weaving the bottom cloth. And you'll see that um, a 9 and 10 are down, 11 and 12 are up. 13 and 14 are down, and 15 and 16 are up. So these two that are up are making a pattern uh, against the, the two that are down. All eight of the top cloth are up because I get the top cloth out of the way so I can do the patterning underneath. So I could weave underneath without the top cloth interfering. So I do that by by putting the shuttle through here. I'm still, I'm still, we're still attaching the legs to the middle, the middle part. Uh, we haven't gone into the bodice area yet, almost. And I put it through here. And so these are the legs. It's just two, two, two parts to the legs. So now it's going to be the, the front. I did, I did the back, and now with the same string, which goes around, around the sides, is um, we're doing the back. And that's what makes it one piece, because it's the same string going round and round. So I put it through here to here. Yeah. Now and then I check to make sure it's too close. I can feel it in here. No, no mistakes where the top cloth and the bottom cloth get. So you I can feel that. The threads are ordered in a V shape. So they they go down and then they close like that. that that's the pattern that this makes with the marching of this. Net. I also do the mid snippet on this loom. And I, I just had it adjusted because as you could see how big the net is, it's 16 meters, 16 meters long because it only has four harnesses. Very easy to remember. Two and three. Three and four. Triangle is two squares. You see, they they go. It goes this way, and, and this uh, this way, and that, that way, and it makes it makes a triangle. אז ככה אני זה אני זה חייתי לראות את העבודות שלה שיאסדה למחון המקדש. חייתי לראות עבודות בבית שלה ש שבעצם מי שורג אז הוא יכול לראות את המורכבויות. של, ה... של מה שהיא עושה. זה יכול להיות דבר יפה וזה יכול להיות דבר פחות יפה, אבל זה פחות העניין. ההריגה, יש לה הרבה 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 טכניקות. זה בעצם היסטוריה של בריאת העולם, של חמשת אלפים שנה, חמשת אלפים משהו שנה. אז בעצם יהודית למדה כל מיני טכניקות שהיום מאוד קשה למצוא את הטכניקות האלה. ראיתי את זה כן בכמה עבודות שלה, שהם כותבים שם. היא ההורגת הכי גדולה בארץ, ובין הגדולות בעולם לדעתי, עם הידע שיש לה והניסיון. 
וממש בדרך נס זכינו להכיר אותה. I'm writing a book. I'm, I'm redoing all the big day kahuna, like if I said I'm doing the mikna sayim, starting with the mikna sayim, then I'm going to do the kotonet, and, and I'm, I'm writing as I'm weaving. And uh, this is for the mikna sayim. This is the, uh, I have the table of contents is the design, the tailor's design, the weaver's design, which I modified the tailor's design in order to, to weave it, and then the textile design. It's what you saw on the uh, wall near the... Uh, so I came up with the weaver's design. And this is the final. And then it's a textile design, various, various textile designs that could be used. I did some uh, samples of honeycomb that are mentioned, and then the uh, design that I'm using. This is the design that I'm using on the uh, Make the Sign. And these are computer drawdowns of the uh, how, how I uh, set up the threads in the harnesses and the, mar the marching. Here, here is that, that marching that you saw above my loom. You see, the, this is uh, the, uh, tre it's called treadling, I call it Marvin. Um, this is a, a sample, I'm going to do a sample 60 wide by 120 high of the parochet, the two-sided uh, weaving. Th this is how they did it. They didn't have a, a computer, but they didn't need it. First of all, the, 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 the intelligence and the craftsmanship of these people were at a level that is very rare, if any, in our time. However, there's still this uh, um, this coordination of working together. Every thread is made of three different colors plus linen. And the, and the three different colors say the tchelet, the argumon, and the sheni. The tefated is like indigo, and uh, the shiny is red, you know, like a, a plant is a kosher nail, and the um, argaman is a purple. And, and each thread, the tefated, argaman, and shiny, are made up of six ply threads. So you have six of four threads. So really you have 24 threads. So it's thick. It doesn't have to be very, very thick. You can use very fine. I plan to use very, very fine threads for the shti. And also for the weft, I'm using fine threads, except the colors that I want to show. If I want to use um, a, a blue, or this, this is going to be, this is going to be um, red and purple. So this purple, this argument, is going to have the six threads in it. Each thread is going to be made up of six of that color, um, except when uh, and applied together. Except if I want to use the argument, that thread is going to be thick, and the others are going to be very thin. So it's going to look like it's going to look purple. It's not going to look like all of them combined. And I'm going to do the same thing with the red and same thing with the blue. So I'm really going to have a choice of predominant colors, but all the colors will be within that predominant color. That's, that's what I always considered uh, uh, my work, the research. And it's, you know, it takes a long time. And like I said, how I'm developing the, uh, the sculpting. Remember I said that's the most yeah. important part? That's the most important part is, is this sculpting um, that, that, they're, that, that it's kosher and, and you don't have to deal with uh, a lot of threads at the end. I mean, it's, it's so once it's done and it's, you know, known, then it could go very, very quickly. I really think it's just a, a beginning. Yeah, it's close. It's any day, and it's just going to be passing on. That's why I'm writing the book. 
כמו זכרי רק ידי דברה מהאור הקליר בזמנו, מכונת הריגה, שלמעשה עד היום, איפה זה נמצא אצלי? בבית, כן? מכונת הריגה נמצאת אצלי בבית, ומה ששמענו, ולמדנו להכיר מקרוב את הידיעות שלנו, היא למדה את זה בודדת. במוסדות גבוהים בארצות הברית, וגם למדה אצל האינדיאנים את השיטות השונות של נהלותה, והיא בסופו של דבר הפכה להיות הרבנית, הרבץ של כל אלה שלומדות עכשיו את שיטות ההריגה כפי שהיא מכירה אותה באופן יסודי ביותר, ואפשר לומר ש... אולי מותר מחליאת דוד שאולי היא יחידה בעולם, יחידה בעולם שמכירה את כל השיטות כל כך טובה. I experienced it through my life in which there's a, a presence um, and I, I'm walking with, a, I'm going about my life and I'm aware I am in the world in, in, in the presence. of the Almighty, but it's so, so I'm always looking for it again, and that the weaving and the thing that I've come to be known by um, uh, out, outside of my little world is the doing of the Big Day Kohona, but the, when I speak about the Big Day Kohona, it's It's, it's not, and I'm embarrassed about it because it's not really the important thing. It really, do, I, I know there's people that are happy that I'm doing it and I, I'm happy to do it and I want to pass the knowledge on, but it's, it's the means, I think, that I've been given to, to, um, uh, to uh, work towards perfection. And that's, um, and that's what it, uh, that's what it is. That state of being is, is a, a state in which um, uh, I, I'm, you know, perfect. I'm perfect in everything that I do, but I, I can never be reached, but it's the closest one can come by being aware that they're in the presence of the Almighty. And that awareness is so far. feeling that there's no room for 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 error there's no room for um, uh, whatever it is that that, that that keeps us from being what we believe we can be Exciting.